Hi everybody, it's Richard again here from Electric Classic Cars and it's time for a race car update, Buffy the race car. So where are we? Where I left you last time, we kind of put a Model 3 motor in the front of it and a mock-up Tesla mo motor in the rear and we were kind of spitballing ideas of what we think we're going to do and now I'm going to show you what we've actually done. So what's uh, happened so far? Well, we've got the motors in. That's the first thing to say. And we've sorted out the steering conundrum that I left with you, you, you with last time. Because obviously with a, a motor in, you couldn't actually get the steering column to where it needed to be. So we had to kind of go around a 90 degree bend. So let's cover the motors first. So what have we done? We've got the front Tesla motor in. So that's kind of mostly in there now. It's kind of uh, semi sort of tacked in um, in place, but it's definitely in the right place now. The uh, drive shafts um, are coming out in the right place and it's as far forward as it can go without hitting the uh, steering rack at the front here. So this um, motor and the rear motor is uh, a motor set out of a Tesla P100D Model S car. So um, it's uh, enough power to start with. And obviously the end game of this car is to put a Tesla plaid system in. But we've got to uh, get something in fairly quickly and uh, just check that the car can actually cope with the power. And even does it even need more power? I don't know. What a stupid question. Of course, it'll need more power. So uh, the front motor's in. You'll also know, uh, notice we've uh, sorted out the uh, steering uh, problem. So what we've actually ended up with is a bevel gear. So what a bevel gear is, is essentially um, uh, just a, a single sort of like gear set in there and uh, you know you've got one that goes like that one goes like that and essentially it just goes kind of like that at a, at a 45 degree angle so there's a bevel gear in there um, you've got a steering column coming in there and we've actually um, uh, cut and shut the um, steering columns uh, to suit now so we've got custom made steering columns here and here this one's actually the standard one uh, and this is um, uh, this one here actually slides um, uh, inside itself as well. So essentially, if you have a frontal crash, that that one there will actually go inside the other. But it's also quite useful because if you've got a, um, a driver that wants the steering a little bit closer or further away, you can adjust it on here, and obviously the steering column will um, you know extend uh, to suit. So that's in place. Now that's obviously got to be bolted in place. Why? Because we've got to get the motor in and out. So essentially that is a bolt-in um, part there that mounts to there. And the cross brace here is obviously going to be a bolt-in part as well. And then the motor can come in and out as we please. So that's how we sorted out the steering. And if you look at the steering there now, we now have steering, which uh, is a good thing on a race car really. So there we go, that's the front side of things. Mounts all in, motors in, uh, steering system done. And then the rear, if we come over here, the rear motor's in. Now, you'll see this is slightly different to how I was discussing it in the previous video, because in the previous video, I was gonna hang the motor at the back, like in a typical um, uh, Model S motor. In fact, if you come this way, you'll see what it's like um, uh, normally in my my daily driven beetle. So usually the motor would sit in that configuration. So essentially it's hanging uh, behind the, the drive shafts. So essentially um, I decided it would be a better idea if we put the, the weight in front of the axles because obviously with any race car, if you've got the weight in between the axles, that's better uh, for cornering and handling. So, uh, and I didn't really want to compromise on this race car, so that's what we've done. Um, we had a lot of faffing around trying to figure out, well, how are we going to get this motor to spin backwards and that motor to spin forwards if we're going to turn it around that way? Um, and obviously, yeah, there are ways to do that. I've done it in the past. Um, you can essentially flip uh, two phases over on a motor and change the encoder wires around to fool the motor into uh, running backwards. You can use a different control board, uh, like a zero EV control board in the Tesla drive unit, and that doesn't matter if it's running forward or backwards, but we've not gone for that solution here. Uh, what we've gone for is an EV controls um, uh, solution because essentially it treats the front motor and the rear motor as if it was in the car. So it's got all that sort of like torque balancing um, going on between the front motor, and, front motor and the rear motor, 
to be able to balance the traction. Uh, and unfortunately, um, the way that's it, or unfortunately, it's actually a benefit really, um, uh, is with the uh, EV control system is that essentially it's fooling these motors into thinking they're still in the car. Um, which means that you can't really run this motor backwards because obviously if we've got it here and we flipped it around that way, this is now wanting to go that way and that one's wanting to go that, that way. Um, and in reverse, they are speed limited and there's no way to really trick them uh, to get around that if you are tricking these into thinking they're still in the car like an EV control system does. So you've then got uh, a couple of options. You can then either... Um, trick it into thinking the motor is spinning the other way and as I say you can do that by flipping over two of the phases on the uh, motor and um, the encoder wires around the, uh, the other way but I'll show you in a bit that's not so easy to do unless you're uh, mounting the inverter um, the other way. Um, I then thought of another uh, way to do it which I'll cover in a bit because I've got a motor over there all stripped apart which I can show you but in the end I thought well hang on a minute a motor doesn't matter if it's up this way or up that way. So why not just actually flip it over? So that's what we've done. We've put the motor on its back because, um, you know, the motor doesn't uh, care about that. There's, you know, it's not like an engine. You can't get an engine and flip it the other way. You can just imagine all the oil is going to go into the heads and it just would not work. But a motor doesn't matter. You've got the motor in there, uh, the inverter's in there. The only thing that does matter is the oil system that's in the gear reduction unit here but um, I'll come to that in a little bit. So that's what we concluded. The easiest way to do this and get that motor that side is just flip it over on its back. Um, and it's actually solved another problem because if we had that here, we would have had to have cut these out of the way. Now, the fact that we flipped it over there, we don't need to do that, so there's no structural changes there. And equally, it brings the, uh, the weight further inbound, which is great for cornering. And it's still got plenty of space here for the batteries. So there you go, that's kind of, again, mounted in place. Uh, again, it's mostly tacked in at the moment, but um, we'll fully weld it in uh, at a later date. Um, we just wanna make sure that everything else is happy um, uh, before we fully weld things in. So the motors are in. Um, what I wanna do today is spin them up, because I just wanna verify that, you know, when I um, do put my foot on the accelerator, that they're both spinning in the right direction. Uh, I don't think there's any reason why that shouldn't happen. Um, and equally, I want to show you the control system that we're using and take you through that. But before I do that, I just want to show you inside a Tesla drive unit because I've got one split apart over there and you can see and picture in your mind some of the challenges we're going to have to still overcome with flipping it over and changing the oil system over. So let's have a look over here. So here we've got the Tesla large drive unit that's sitting in the rear of the race car and um, this is a spare one and I've kind of like semi taken it apart so you can see what's inside it. So what have we got? Well we've got the inverter at this side and we've got the motor at that side and then we've got the gear reduction unit in the middle and this is obviously just the inverted cover so there's nothing inside there so now that just literally goes across over, over there and sits there. So I'll move that out of the way. So this is the inverter and as I said to you before, one of the challenges we had is to try to fool this motor into actually spinning in reverse. And if we flip this around this way, you can see here's the three phases for the motor. And um, that kind of, if I move this out of the way as well, there we go. So they attach onto here. Now, to flip uh, a motor into reverse, literally, if you just um, change those over to there, swap those over to there, and um, uh, alter the inverter, uh, the um, encoder wires, you'll actually get the motor to spin in reverse. But as you can see, it's very tight in here. To, so to get them uh, crossed over, you will literally have the um, bus bars kind of nearly touching each other uh, with insulation on it, obviously, which I didn't feel comfortable with. Um, so then I thought, well, hang on a minute. This, you know, three phases here, and if you look on these inverters, there's three phases here as well. So I thought, well, what, surely you can just take, and all these come apart, by the way, you know, that comes off, that comes off, that comes off. So what happens if you just take this one off, take this one off, and move them in position? And so we tried that, 
And for some bizarre reason, it didn't work. And I'm still scratching my head as to why that didn't work, because in theory, I think that should have worked, surely. Just take that phase off there, take that phase off there, move it around, put it back on. Obviously, you've got the, the wiring uh, up to the uh, gate controllers uh, as well that you have to swap over. But uh, yeah, still can't figure out why that didn't work. So any Tesla engineers out there, tell me why that didn't work. Um, so actually, what we ended up doing, as I say, is flipping that motor over, uh, which you know, isn't the end of the world, um, but I'll cover now the challenges that we've got uh, by doing that. So, in here, uh, spin that around a little bit so you can see it. So here's your gear set. Now, the, uh, this is a, a wet sump system, so essentially you used to have the oil up to probably about that level there, and inside here was this, which is a, an oil pump and a pickup at the bottom. So essentially this used to sit kind of behind this gear set here and in there. You used to pick up the oil through this filter here and then through and you've got a couple of oil squirters there and I think there's also an oil feed to the back of this bearing here. So now the problem we got is, well, the oil is down the bottom now. So how are we going to pick that up? Well, looking at other oil pump systems out of, uh, I can't remember if this is in Tesla Model 3 um, or a small Tesla drive unit, but equally it's, it's definitely out of a Tesla. So you can see what they've done here. They've got an oil pump, but actually extended the pickup around to, I think that's the pickup there. Uh, yeah, so that's the pickup. So I think what we're going to do is kind of take a leaf out of Tesla's own book and keep the oil pump in it. So we'll keep that bit there. And then we'll do as they've done there um, and just get a bit of pipe and extend it around to the bottom to pick up the oil. And probably, again, have a fil filter system or some kind of system just to take out any uh, swarf or anything that's in the, in the oil. So we're going to keep it fairly stock and standard. Uh, oil pump's going to sit there and we're just going to find a solution to essentially bring that pickup to the bottom uh, where the oil is. So that's a fairly simple solution uh, um, which I'm, I'm happy with. So that's essentially how we're gonna do the um, one modification that we need to do in the large Tesla drive unit. So now, all I've gotta do now is just check that the actual motors spin and go in the right direction. So back to the race car. Right, so I think we're ready. Um, obviously, whenever any Tesla motors come in, we test them uh, on the bench anyway and just spin them up and make sure they work. But this will be the first time we've actually got the motors in the car and spinning up together. So you're going to experience um, it the same time as I'm going to experience it. So hopefully everything will work. It should work because it's tried and tested technology, but you never know. Um, so what have we got? We've got a 400 volt battery pack here. And if you come around here, you'll see how we've wired it up to him. Um, so you've got 400 volt battery pack over there. We've got it coming to essentially a contactor box here. So there's two big orange cables coming in from the battery pack. Then in there's two contactors and the pre-charge system. Then you've got um, two orange cables then going to the rear motor, two orange cables going to the front motor, which signify the high voltage side of things. And you've got a Molex um, uh, connector there with some low voltage uh, wires coming out uh, that control the contactors. And just there is the clever box. So this here is the EV controls box itself. And essentially, this is uh, wired up to the um, uh, contactors, obviously. It's wired up to CAN to this motor here, and then from there to the front motor. Um, and also, this can communicate via Bluetooth to an app that I've got over there on an iPad, um, which can uh, uh, show you the speed of the motor, motor temperatures, things like that. But also, you can change direction. But actually, that's not how we're going to have it in the car. Um, we're going to use buttons for the direction because obviously having the dashboard behind the steering wheel is great But then reaching around and actually touching uh, the screen to put it into drive and stuff isn't very practical So we'll have the um, direction buttons separate and then we'll uh, use the display that I've got over there as just a dashboard display system So if you come over there, you'll see the rest of it So what I've got here is a simulation of the car, if you like. So I've got the 12 volt battery down here. I've got a button down here, which um, is going to be essentially your ignition, turning it on and off. I've got your brake switch and accelerator. And here 
is the um, app that I was telling you before. And this is actually going to be sitting, it's uh, an iPad. So essentially that is going to be sitting behind the um, steering wheel when it's all in the car. And essentially we'll set it up so that when you turn the ignition on, that'll boot up with the app straight away. Um, I suppose there's uh, no getting around the fact that uh, I need to test it now. So uh, I'm getting a little bit nervous. Uh, I think everything is wired up okay. So that's all done to there. Yep, okay, we're good to go. So um, if I press uh, this button here now, that should switch the car on. And what you should hear, if everything works well, is some contactors clicking in. So if you're ready, Tim, ready? Yeah, fingers crossed. All right. And it goes on. Oh, excellent. Right, there's two clicks you heard then. That was the negative contactor, and the pre-charge comes on at the same time, and then a, a second or so later, the positive contactor then closes. So you'll hear the negative one go clink, and then the, uh, a second later, the positive one goes clink and closes. So now we should have 400 volts system live, and if we look in there, yeah, 340 volts. Essentially, it's um, not a, a full charge in the pack there. So we've got 340 volts on the actual high voltage bus. And now, fingers crossed, if I uh, switch the brakes on and off, so you'll see, yep, there you go. So that's the brakes going on and off. And you've got to have your foot on the brake to change direction. So I'll go into D for drive. Right. There's no getting away from this, is there? I've got to test it. Right, you ready? Ready. Uh, actually, can you go around there, Tim, and see the direction it's going? So this should be going forwards now. So if you go around there, and I press on the accelerator, you should see the drive shaft coupler turn. You ready? Okay. So this is when you're forwards, ready. yeah. Hey. That's forwards, it, yeah? It's going forwards, yeah. Cool. Right, check the front then. See if that's going in the same direction. So if it's not going in the same direction, I've made a big booby. <laughs> We've got lots of tyre smoke if it's going in the other direction. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> ready? I'm ready. Forwards. Yeah, yeah that's going forwards. Ooh, all right, that's half the job done. Let me uh, put it into reverse and see if it goes the other way now. So, all right, that's now in reverse. You ready? Ready. So reverse. Yeah, that's reverse. Yeah. Right, check on the large drive unit at the rear. Is that going in reverse as well? Ready? Yeah. Yeah. Whew. That's a relief. That is a relief. That's a happy man. Definitely. A happy man, we're a relieved <laughs> man. Right, cool. That works. I am genuinely relieved at that. So there we go. That all works. And um, I think... Um, I'm happy with that. Uh, so one thing that's worth mentioning though, there's no coolant and then there's no oil in these. So anybody running up a Tesla um, driving it on test, only keep your amps very, very low and you know do it for a few seconds and that's it. Because the inverters are very um, temperature sensitive if they don't have coolant in. So whatever you do, don't do a test drive without coolant and oil in uh, for obvious reasons for the oil, but for the coolant, yeah, you've got to have the coolant in if you're going to do um, a test drive. So just minimal amps and just make sure that it slowly spins if you've got no coolant and oil in. And that's it. I think um, I'll cover um, this uh, display system at a, another uh, time because obviously there's going to be lots of people wanting more detail on that. A fantastic system that it is. Um, but I think that's it now. I think I'll go and celebrate with a pint. Um, I think... I'll give you a sneak peek on what's going to come on the next video. So if we go over here, um, on the next episode, uh, in the background over here, you'll see some of the bodywork that's arrived. Ta-da! So race car bodywork. There you go. It's all fiberglass and flimsy. So essentially, this hopefully, in the next video, will be either on the car, we'll be putting it on the car in the next video. So I think that's enough for the uh, uh, race car update for now. So hope you enjoyed our Buffy update. And uh, any questions, let me know below on the uh, comments. And I'll see you on the next one.